So today, there's a bit of a focus on gradient, making sure you understand gradient well. Um, and so I just want to start with making sure you're all aware of the formula for gradient. So, uh, you know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is the commonly used formula. Sometimes teachers say change in y over change in x, or they sometimes say rise over run. So those are the different ways of describing gradient. Most of the time in grade 11, you end up using this formula, but it is also important to be aware, to understand what gradient is by just looking at a picture. So we'll practice that a little bit today. Important idea, if a line goes in that direction, gradient is considered to be positive. Okay? But if a line goes in that direction, gradient is considered negative. And I'm sure most of you have seen these ideas before. So let us start with a little warm-up question. What is the correct answer to this question? What is the gradient or slope of this line segment? Slope is another word for gradient. So the change, the sort of change in X is four and the change in Y is two. And the, the direction it's going in is positive, which is the same as two and four or the same as a half. And so is there one that is a half? The answer is gonna be C. So I see there are, both C and D got some attention. So the really important thing for you guys to realize is when we do gradient, we always do the change in Y or the rise on top and the change in X is on the bottom. So this is really a great you know, reason to do this question just to catch it at the beginning of the evening. And the symbol we use for gradient is M. Okay, so you often see me write M. Let's do another one like this. So what is the gradient or slope of the straight line? It's maybe helpful to think of the endpoints here, like being here and here, if you like. What is the gradient or slope of this line? So because of the direction it's going in, it feels like it has to be negative because it's going down to the right. So it's almost like it's going downhill, it's negative. But then we have to know, we have to count like one, two, three, four, five. So it's going down by five units and it's going across two, three, across five, three units. So minus five over three, but I'm not sure if there's a minus five over three, there isn't, but that is an improper fraction. And so we can write it as a mixed number. So three goes into five once. And then is there an option that gives, gives us that, that? Yes, it's gonna be A. So again, I want to make sure, why is it negative? Aha, yes, Lua, good question. Okay, so in, if you have a straight line that goes up and to the right, 
the gradient is positive. And the reason for that is if you think of the Cartesian plane, we know that X goes positive in that direction and Y goes positive in that direction. So that it makes sense for the gradient to be going up in that direction. Whereas if the line is sloping down to the right, then we say the gradient is negative. And you can see here that the, this line is sloping down to the right. Is it always necessary to change to a mixed number? No, it isn't. In fact, Manda, I would recommend leaving it as an improper, but just in this question, the only way to see the right answer was to convert it across. I just want to make sure some of you are noticing the problem with the Y must be on top, right? The vertical change must be on top and the horizontal change must be on the bottom. Okay. Pleasure, 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 pleasure. Um, let's not do that one. Uh, um, let's do... Let's do one without counting. Let's do one like this. Find me the gradient of that line. Now, I'm going to suggest that instead of, you can count it with blocks, it's not a problem. But just for this one, why don't you use the gradient formula? And then we'll confirm afterwards that if we count blocks, it's the same thing. Oh, and Kazi, fantastic. That's why we are here to bring insight into your maths learning. So what do we need to do? So often students make a mistake by not having the Y on top. So three minus one is an important step. And then, six minus two, which gives us two over four, which is a half. So you can see that the formula works. Now, does the counting blocks thing still work? Well, we know that it's positive because it's sloping up to the right. And if we go, how much do we go up? We go up by two and we go across by four. And so the answer, we also could have got the answer counting blocks, but it gets more difficult to count blocks as the examples get more difficult. So normally in grade 11, most of the time when you find ingredient, you use this formula. So let's just get really good at that quickly. So I want you to find me the gradient of the pink line. And I want you to find me the gradient of the blue line. And we would say the gradient of the line FE and the gradient of the line HG. Can you do those two gradient calculations for me? And yeah, um, so I see some answers are coming in already for for pink or for what we would call M of I'll call it EF or pink. Uh, that's normally the notation we use. We say gradient for M and an EF for the points involved. And you can start with either as long as you're consistent. Um, I'll start with F. Well, actually, let me start with E because I went EF. So on the top, I have minus two, minus one. And on the bottom, I have two minus minus five, which is minus three over two plus five, which is minus three over seven. So I get minus three over seven for the pink one as the gradient. What do you get for the blue one? Mm 
the one that we have for that one. So I get three over four for the blue one. And what the other thing that makes me happy that I know I'm on the right track is that you can see the blue one should be a positive gradient and you'd see the pink one should be a negative gradient. And you can see that that has happened in our calculations. So McKenna's asked, will you have doubles since you are subtracting with negative and will it turn to positive? Very good observation, McKenna. So over here, when you have minus a minus, you end up having plus. And so that's why minus one, minus minus four actually becomes minus one plus four, which then ends up as positive three. Uh, and so that's how we get that. So from what I can see, you're okay with gradients. Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling okay with gradients um, and thumbs down if you still feel a bit uncertain. But what I see is that you're comfortable and we can move on. Uh, but always good to check because I, can't, I have some of your body language, but I don't have that one. Okay. okay, so the second part of tonight is talking about gradient, but also talking about straight lines. And so I would love to hear from you guys, what is the formula for a straight line that you've heard about in class? What information have you heard about straight lines in class? And just pop, pop your hand up. You can give me a little something um, that you've heard about straight lines in class. I'm gonna say, what's the formula as a starting kind of point? Who feels, oh, I see. This part always kills me. <laughs> okay, so a lot of students are saying MX plus C. Are there any other things that your teachers have told you about with straight lines? Any other formats that you sometimes use? Who feels like sharing some knowledge in class? Has anybody seen anybody seen this one? Okay, so this is also another, it's not wrong, but it's, these are both formats for the straight line. Normally, the one on the right-hand side is, is like an intermediate form where we use it to help us find the straight line, whereas the final form of the straight line is more commonly written as MX plus C. Um, and both methods are fine. Whatever your teacher uses, you know, it, it, both are fine. Okay, now I want to ask, what does the M stand for and what does the C stand for? Because, you know, clearly if they're involved in straight lines, you need to know what they are. So what does the M stand for? What does the C stand for? Who feels like sharing there? Aha, so it turns out the M, the gradient that we've just been talking about is in fact the same M in this formula. And then C is the Y intercept or where a straight line cuts the Y axis, yes. Now you'll notice that there is an M in this format. There's also an M and this is the same gradient in this format over here. Uh, what is this Y1, X1 stuff? Who would like to share what they think that is? I think most students haven't seen this format, so I'll just touch on it, but what is, a, what is X1, Y1? X1, Y1. Who yeah, so Cody said it perfectly, some Piwe said it perfectly. It's just a point on that straight line. So if you are working with a straight line, if you have a point on the line, that can be X1, Y1. Yeah, okay. So let's put this formula to the test. Let's see how it goes. So let's start 
by just identifying what is the y intercept in this in this particular um, question. Which option is um, is it A, B, C, or D? I've given you a a graph here. What is the y intercept of this uh, straight line? Yeah, so I think everybody can see that this is the y-intercept here. And so that would be four. And so the correct answer would be naught four. Yeah, that's not too hard. Okay, nicely done. Let's do, uh, what is the y-intercept for this line? So if we look here, it looks to me like this is the place where it cuts the y-axis, which looks to me like a two. And the option that we then see is that it's gonna be B. Okay, so this y-intercept is, is pretty straightforward. Now, I want to know what is the equation of the straight line using this y mx plus y equals mx plus c straight line formula that you are um, telling me stands for straight line. So I'm at my own question. What is the equation of the straight line? In order to, to find this, you need to find, it seems, m, and you also need to find c. Now you've just found c, which is great. So then I guess you have to only find M. You tell me in the chat, what do you get for the equation of the straight line? You could grab two points off the line or you could just count blocks, it's up to you. Um, I mean, I can see two coordinates that you could use would be naught, two, and three, zero, I guess. Um, or you could count the blocks, but I'm not going to find the gradient. So. So what's the equation of the straight line here? Yeah, no, I'm gonna show you how to do this. We're just warming up for this now. So I think that the gradient has to be minus two thirds, and then it's X, and then you told me that the y-intercept is two. So the equation of this straight line is gonna be minus two over three x plus two. I think I need to do a more um, specific example uh, where I leave out the picture and I just work from the coordinates. Uh, but let's just before I do that, let me get a quick little vote. Thumbs up if you're sort of following what I'm doing, thumbs down if you're feeling a bit confused. And just be honest, so I can gauge where the class is at. We help to just get a quick feel. Okay, so a amount of you are still kind of finding your feet, which is completely fine. Let me do an example where we have to find the equation of a straight line. Um, and so where they just give us points, there's nothing else to distract us. I'm going to do an example with you now, and then after the break, you are going to practice this um, with me. Okay, so I've got two points, and the, the, a line is passing through these two points. 
And how do I find the equation of that straight line? And there's two main methods that we would do this. In both of them, you need to find the gradient. So I want everyone to try and find me the gradient between these two points. And all I'm going to say is that you need to use the formula like this. So find me the gradient between these two points, 3 minus 1 and 9, 2. The question says, what is the slope of the straight line passing between this and this? So okay. So we seem comfortable saying that the correct answer is D, and so M equals half. Okay, so no difficulty there. Now, say I change the question and I want to know. What is the equation? So what is the equation of the straight line passing through those points? There's two ways you can do it. The one way is to write down this new gradient I've just worked out and leave C blank, and then just choose one of the points that is on the line. So I want you guys to choose for me which point should I use, 3 minus 1 or 9, 2? You tell me which one um, you'd like me to choose. Okay. I like your choice. You chose 9, 2. And I think it probably is simpler to, to choose numbers that are all positive. So this point 9, 2 is on the straight line. And the good news is I've already got my gradient. All I need to figure out is what is the C value. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to sub this point into the graph. So this is y, this is x. So I get 2 equals a half times 9 plus c. Then I have to ask myself, what is a 2 times, or what is a half times 9? And that's just going to be 4 and a half. So what is my C value going to be? I want to ask you at the computer, what is the C value going to be for this straight line? You can write 4, 5, yes. So the C value is going to be 2 minus 4.5, which is minus two and a half or minus 2.5 or minus five over two. All of those are completely fine. And so the equation of my straight line would be y equals a half x minus five over two, where the important things that you worked out were the gradient and the y-intercept. Now, just to show you how the other method works, and it's also completely fine, is we say y minus some point equals m, and the gradient was a half, and then x minus some point. Now, the point that you guys chose earlier was 9 and 2. So this is the same point that I'm going to use here. It's the point on the line. Now, if I'm a good math teacher, I should get the same answer using both methods because they should both give me the same answers. So what you do is you say x minus, this was x1, so this would be 9. And over here on this side, you go y minus 2. Okay, so let's see if we get the same answer. What do we need to do? The y minus 2 is the same. This would be a half x. Now what's minus 9 times a half? It's minus 4 and a half. Okay, so that's good. Then, uh, 
Um, y equals a half x minus four and a half plus two. <coughs> so what I've done is I've moved this minus two to the other side. And now I get a half x, so minus four and a half plus two is just minus two and a half or minus five over two. And so the good news is both methods will give us the same answer. Now, again, different teachers will do it in different ways, but what I'm concerned about is, <coughs> do you at least understand one of those two? Give me a thumbs up if you followed that. Give me a thumbs down um, if you haven't followed one of them. Okay, and let's have a quick little vote. Let's call this method one, and let's call this method two. Which method do you like the best? Do you like method one? Put a one there. If you like method two, put a two there. I want to see what is your favorite. Um... Some students, as they get more comfortable, they switch between whichever method is the quickest. And as you get more comfortable, um, you know, you, you'll feel free to use whatever method is, is the quickest and the easiest. Okay, and I will do both where I can throughout. Um, awesome. All right, we've been going for half an hour and I've been working you hard, so it's only fair. Um, and I think that we should have a bit of a break. So I want you to stand up uh, and I want you to join me as we are gonna just take a bit of a relax. So let's start by just pretending you're outside and you're spinning around and Please turn on your cameras guys let's see your lovely faces why did you why did you spin the whole way around just to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's silly um because silliness is good our brains like a bit of silliness um, every now and again then uh just shake it out so shake out your arms shake it out and then let's do some big circles. And then let's do some small circles. And then change direction, small circles. Our new students are like, what is going on in this class? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I didn't sign up for an aerobics instructor class. Yeah, yeah, but it's part of the journey. Um, okay, then let's stretch out our shoulders. So you might think I'm a bit nutty but the thing is you have to take your brain into like a low stress environment for a bit you can't keep it in this heightened state of stress the whole time and so what this tries to do is just kind of let your mind relax a little bit and also it's good for your body to just get some blood flow going uh okay what should we do next um oh lots of clicks i tell you what let's let's be a little bit different let, let us do a different high heart rate this is we're gonna do knee ups so make sure space is clear. And what you're going to do is you're going to do this. So like that, like that. And it's going to hit your stomach and it's going to hit your quads. And let's do 20. Okay. So three, two, one, one. Boy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20. Woo. And I think that is a cardio for today. Tell me in the chat what you thought of the knee ups. Was it everything that you imagined it could be, or was it better? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then while you're recovering from your, oh, I'm also recovering, um, we are going to play a bit of Mass 24. So here are two questions. And what we do, is we try and make 24 using the numbers on this card. So a lot of time we're getting quite competitive about this. And so, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's see if we can, let's see if we can be mass 24 champions. For those who are new, um, we try and make 24 using four numbers on the card. We have to use each one. Um, and we only allowed operations plus minus times divide Ooh, I can feel I'm under breath and uh, brackets. 
<laughs> Phew. Okay, so in Corsi has said, aha, nicely done in Corsi. So six times four um, times three minus two. And oh, but there's all sorts of ways for doing the red one. Wow. Okay, you guys are smashing that chop chop. Letu <laughs> and Nozi. Okay, Ongani. Okay, so the red has been <laughs> soundly defeated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if you can do the blue one. And then I don't want to. There mustn't been too much time on this, but let's give it a go to blue, and then we'll try. This time we'll have a look at the yellow, which is the. So, how would we do the blue one? Any ideas? Or could, in fact, I tell you what, choose either one of these and have a crack. And if you feel like you know, put it in the chat. Uh, and then, yes, I see lots of you have got the red one. You are. Let's just see if we can get one of these, the red, the yellow or the blue ones. And I actually haven't tried to do them before, so I have to do them with you too. Hmm. Uh, what about? Oh, okay. I think I've got the blue one. Ah, oh, Theodore. So, okay. So, seven minus four is important. In the blue one. So I see seven minus four, and then that gives us uh, three. Seven minus four gives us three. And then uh, yes, plus three gives us six. That times four gives us 24, which I see quite a few students have got that. Uh, and then so I've used the seven, the four, the three, and the four. And for yellow, Tova has said seven times five minus eight minus three, which is correct. So it's 35 minus eight minus three, which is 24. Oh, well done, Beverly. Okay, so let's nice move on because this is not a Math 24 lesson, but I am impressed by our rapidly improving Math 24 skills. And for those who are new, don't worry, you'll get faster at this. It's just a fun game we play to just have a bit of a distraction. <laughs> I know everyone was so quick today, even I felt a bit intimidated. Don't worry, Nozi. I, I, people are, there's some naturals here at Math 24. They've been training, it seems, in secret. Okay, let's go and see if you guys can figure out what is the equation of the straight line passing through these two points. What is the equation of the straight line passing through these two points? Over to you guys. You can choose whatever method you like. I'll try and do both. But I want you to go for it. I'll call it method one. Both of them kind of start in the same place. I'm going to get some water while you guys get going.
So up to this point, they're kind of the same. Both methods need the gradient. Both methods need a point um, on the line. Does it matter which bracket you start with? Um, it doesn't, as long as you're consistent. So just to show you, if I found the gradient, like if I started here and I went minus four, minus two, and then I went one minus three, I would still get minus six, wait, we'll do it. Uh, minus four minus two is the first bit, so that's fine. And then I went one minus three, which would be minus two. Oh uh, yes, and two negatives knock each other out, so I get three. So you can see it doesn't matter which way you, you start. Uh, and then in this one, if I put a two and then a three here, what is my C going to be equal to? It's nine. And then in this method, so let's say Y minus two. Yeah, so y equals 3x minus 7. And does, I chose 3, 2, but I didn't have to use 3, 2. I could have used 1 minus 4. And so the answer should be C. Okay. Let us... Oof, flip. I just missed water, but luckily it didn't land on my computer. Oh, that was a moment of terror. Uh, <laughs> do you, do you computers swim? I think I'm I wish I was joking. <laughs> okay, um, let's do this one while I go and grab some tissues. <laughs> Yeah, you would get, if you'd use the other coordinate, you would definitely get the same answers. Yep. <laughs> Look, although that makes me very happy. I'm so glad we could be so helpful. Well, and the good news is there's a lot more we can help you with too. So, so let's see uh, if, so I want, to get this, so minus five, minus five, and then three, minus, minus two, so minus 10 over three plus two. So minus two is what I get for my gradient. And now what I need to do is I need to figure out which one goes with which. Uh, and so in this method, I would write in what I've got so far and choose a point. Doesn't matter what point you choose, I'm gonna choose minus two to five. Uh, and then in the other method, same thing, I'm gonna choose minus two five and I would get, um, minus two, uh, what do I get here? Okay, I get y minus five. And in this one, I need to put a five here. 
and a minus two. Excuse me, uh, and then I get five equals four plus C, and so C is one. And then on this side, I would get Y equals minus two X minus four plus five. And so you can see the answers should be A. Okay, and I've showed you both methods there. Um, there's a quick little vote. Thumbs up if you're feeling confident. Thumbs down if you're feeling unsure. Uh, isn't C minus one? It's not because what happens is when the four comes across, it becomes minus. And you've got five minus four. Yeah. Pleasure, 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 pleasure. Okay, let us do two more. Now, uh, which of, see if you can figure out, I'll let you do this. Actually, you know, I think the printing is not great on that one. It's a bit vague, so let me, um, let's do this one. What is the equation of the line through these two points? See if you can do that. And I'm handing you over to you guys to practice. You want to get to the point with this where literally finding the equation of a straight line is like adding five plus five. That's the point of like how boring it must be for you if you if you want to do really well. And it, the good news is you can get there. It's just about practice. I think my um my camera is everything is being a bit difficult. Am I back? There we go. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, can you see me, Abel? Um, no, please. Okay. Um, now we can see you. Okay, I think something weird was just happening there. So uh, what point should I use? I'll use the point five minus eight. Uh, I'm just gonna do method two for this one because I'm running out of time, but we should get the same answer. So y minus, uh, minus eight equals minus three over eight, x minus five. So I get y plus eight equals minus three over eight, X, oh, there's some nasty fractions here, uh, plus, uh, what do we have, 15 over 8? Yeah, 15 over 8. And then I have to take away 8 from both sides. And what do we get if we go 15 over 8? Uh, I guess that's just minus that. 16 over 8 is 2. So we should get minus 49 over 8. Uh, I suppose I could say, yeah, minus 49 over 8 when I bring that across. You can use your calculators. And so you should get 
C as the answer. I can scroll down. Yep, that's fine. Okay. And now, can you see my working now? Is this... Um, Okay, so let's just check. So if you get, okay, when you bring, when you bring this plus eight to the other side, it becomes minus eight. So let me go over that bit because I think I went a bit quick. Plus 15 over eight minus eight. Now, uh, 15 over eight, uh, eight could be written as 64 over eight. And so that's why those two together Obviously, your calculator will make this easier, but you can just go. So it should be that. Yeah. Have we got time? We've got some time for some more. So the answer should be C. Okay, well, let's do some fun ones. Let's just do some ones. I, I went and found some interesting questions just in case we had some extra time and just to kind of extend you guys a little bit. So which of these graphs is Y equals X minus three? Is it A, B, C, or D? This is sort of using common sense about straight lines. Which option do you think it is? Who would like to share their thinking? This is where I'd love to hear a student, like, how did you think about this question? Because it's a different type of question. And I love it that I see different answers in the chat, which means someone has to explain their thinking. Come on, someone put your hand up and tell us what you were thinking. Whether you're wrong or right, I don't care. All I care about is... Um, can you tell me what you were thinking when you thought through stuff? This is a good question because I'm getting lots of different answers. Who's going to share, share their thinking with me? Pop your hand up and we can unmute you. Okay, Shante, let's go to you. Shante, what were you thinking about when you tried to answer this question? So what I was thinking was because C represents the y-intercept, um, the line on the the straight line graph has to be below the x-axis. So that's why it's said between B or D. But I yep. took a total guess between B and D and went with D. Yeah. So I, I sort of, you did some good deductions. There's no ways it could be A or C because their y-intercepts were positive. So it cannot be those two. So then the only question is, is it B or is it D? And there's something else that we need to look at is what is the gradient in this? It's a bit hidden, but the gradient is one and it's positive. And to me, this D looks like it's sloping down. It's a negative gradient. The gradient is negative, which doesn't fit the you know, situation. So it can't be this one, which means it must be that one. Nice thinking question. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll save. Let me not go too much in one night. So let's call it there for a night. Um, Label, can you put the link to the quiz, practice quiz uh, in the chat for the students? And what I'm going to say is well done. We've done a good lesson today. We've made good progress.